G'day everyone, we are here at Motornord in Sundsvall, Sweden. So we've brought up one of the stair K24s that we have. Um, we're about to disassemble the entire engine. So we can show you what's inside of the junkyard engine. Uh, and then we can show you all the parts of the guy again for next year's engine. The next year we're aiming for the 800 horsepower mark, give or take. Uh, it will depend on class rules. But we've also brought the Turbo Smart gear up so we can unbox that, show you all the new gear. And yeah, we need to start tearing it down. Let's go. Let's do it. This is Roger. He's the co-owner of Motornord. He's been a link dealer for many, many years and one of the most trusted tuners in Sweden. So crusty. How are you feeling? What was this to come on? Great. Definitely not hungover at all. Checks out. The Garrett Turbo actually had a T3 to V-band adapter. With the new Turbo Smart 6466, we don't need that anymore, but unfortunately that means that the Turbo sits a little bit too low and it is hitting the manifold. So we're gonna be looking to either making a bit of an extension or having the manifold rebuild completely. So we're removing the balance shafts and also the oil pump. Because uh, we're going to dry sump, we can hopefully get a much lower profile on everything. We have noticed a nice little dent in the oil pickup. Hopefully that was done during transport and not during operation of the engine. But we'll find out shortly. It's, it's a very long st stroke engine. Yeah. So it's a four cylinder or very badly internal balance. So they running really rough yeah so the balance shafts even that's out so the car won't vibrate mm -hmm. in a like a normal road car so yeah oh, but on a race car you don't doesn't matter it's just taking comfort yeah even though the k20 or k20 n24 is already known for being quite a vibration heavy engine yeah even with a balance shaft yeah jesus that's a tight one So taking the front cover off, because uh, we've got a very nice billet front cover for the next engine, and that's gonna match up with a very nice billet valve cover. That is also a low, low profile. So we got that from the Revline Time Attack Porsche, uh, if you've seen that one. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a very pretty engine when it's put back together. Definitely the first time I took that off. Uh, 
Um, so we're taking off some of the timing gear at the moment. Are we keeping, are we changing anything from stock or are we keeping all the stock components? We're gonna run new stock components for the timing chain. OEM Honda stuff. Including the chain? Run the OEM chain? Yes. Tensioner? Tensioner, OEM stuff. So we know good quality OEM Honda stuff. It's impressive that a 200 horsepower engine from factory can still handle 800 plus horsepower on stock stuff. Yeah. Well, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're removing the cam angle sensors now uh, to, for the VCT. So the energy management system know where the cams is so we can fully track it. So we can aim for a target and the uh, ECU will make it go there. So we can uh, get a nice, nice power curve. Look, the it's 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 uh, three cam lobes on the VTEC cam. Two small and one big. The small ones is without VTEC. Then it locks the third one in with that pin with oil pressure. So they get stuck together. And then it's the big lobe that's run the the valves. Step. Yeah. The next step, taking the head off. Yep. And then we can remove the old springs and valves yep. and everything else. Yeah, freshen it up. Clean. New valve seals, new springs, new valves. We've also realized we probably don't need these anymore since VTEC will be engaged all the time. VTEC, yo, 100% of yep. the time. Yeah. Who needs idle? Who needs idle? Race car. Yeah. Um, how long has Motonor been in business for? Uh, in the current form, from early 80s. And uh, me and my brother took it over 2015. I've been working it for 20 years. Uh, we're all done. We have finished shipping everything. Last little bit was the oil squirters. Um, but yeah, it's ready. Roger has a little blasting set up over there. So we're going to media blast the whole block, wash it, get it all prepped. And then luckily next door, they have a machine shop. So they're going to do the sleeving uh, for us. But we need to wait for a bit of a slot in their queue. So probably a few weeks uh, until that gets done. Obviously, it's also going into Christmas now. So everyone wants a bit of a, a break from the year. Hopefully... January, February, sometime, we'll come back up and uh, start the assembly phase. Future is here. I just want to jump in before we show you all the new parts going into the engine. Uh, Roger's done an amazing offer for us. He's going to do a discount for anyone who's watching. So head over to the website. The link is down in the description. 
type in Forza 10 and get 10% off a huge range on the website. Thanks. So yeah, now we're here with Roger yep. from Motonord. We're gonna have a look at all the parts that are gonna go into the engine and how he helped us choose everything yep. and why we're using what. Yep. And yeah. What's up to First, for the block, just always start from the bottom and work our way up. So we're gonna use start on dry sleeves for this one. We had a bit of a discussion, right, about whether go to the mid sleeves or the dry sleeves. Yeah. Um, and for the power lever, we're gonna run it. Uh, and for what you're gonna use it, I think that dry sleeve is gonna be the best choice to hold up and for cooling and stuff yeah. like that. We don't. Once we step up the power, then we can. Yeah, that way that. maybe you have to go up to a to a mid sleeve or uh, or even a billet block. So, so <laughs> Reese got a little bit excited behind the camera. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hear the truck. I was like, "Ooh, do it!" Yeah. yeah, not yet, but right. Yeah. Like, so, but uh, this is some. This is a good in between for pistons. We have AA pistons for it. It's the ultra series. I love the with coating. the nice coating on, so it keeps the heat. Yeah, separate separate from, from the crown, so so you yeah. don't get detonation points and stuff like that. So easy. What compression ratio are we running? We will measure that anyway. Yeah. Uh, when we assemble it to to totally find out the real compression. Yeah. Nine and a half, ten, I think it is. Oh wow! Some, some something there, because you're gonna run uh, E hundred. Yeah, it's not gonna be a problem at all to run like, around ten. We're gonna run some proper big boys pins for it, to so they can withstand all the sun pressure. That's so that's not gonna be a problem. That's <laughs> easy. <laughs> yeah. Setter P. I beam. Car rods for G4 the steel with uh, Amco 18 bushings. And we're going to be running stock crank. Stock crank? Stock block. Stock uh, block. Just sleeves. Uh, with sleeves. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then for the head as well, stock head, stock cams, and. Yeah, and a super tech full kit for a valve train. Super tech Inconel uh, exhaust valves, stainless steel inlets. We use Inconel on the exhaust because heat management. The Inconel takes a lot of heat, and uh, it's not that much heat in the intake side. So then we get away with running a steel one. Subdex UL spring kit. That's good for nine and a half thousand RPM. This kit. Yeah. So the plan for this engine, right? It should be in the seven to eight hundred. Horsepower range. Yeah, um, I've been seeing a lot of people building similar engines and saying like it's good for one thousand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the other yeah, spec them are like a, a like a thousand horsepower kit. Yeah. So, but we prefer to keep it like build it to that level. Yeah. We can even go much higher because of the class rules. So we're we're yeah. stuck with that. Yeah. We want that should be like a safe margin because I think yeah, if we push this to like a thousand, then. We discussed de-stroking, other more complex builds. Yeah. We decided to go with like a risk level build. Yeah, right? like, it's a it's a really good engine, but not with so much exotic parts. Yeah. So if something should ha knock on wood, <laughs> would happen. <laughs> yeah. Then it's not the end of the world. You can have a new engine up and running really yeah. fast. Yeah. Now on the power level, we're gonna you're gonna use it on. I think it's gonna be really good and. Uh, really reliable nice yeah it's yeah. i'm excited like it's so, a relatively budget engine right like compared yeah. to like some of them yeah other setups are yeah. for the same kind of horsepower and yeah, yeah. and a very like especially considering it's a thousand kilo miata <laughs> yeah. 800 horsepower is gonna be it's gonna be it's fun. gonna be crazy yeah and we're gonna we have thus discussed the vtech and we're oh, gonna yeah. do the vtech delete lock lock the vtech in so it's gonna be on all the time and the reason for doing that, right, is because, well, one for clearance, because of the anti-lag, the VTEC sensors are kind of yeah. right in the way of the space yeah. we need. Yes, yeah. also uh, simplifies you things Simplifies, a bit. you got a lighter belt train when you do it, and you get a better oil pressure. Because when you're opening that, the VTC valve for the VTEC, a lot of oil go that way, and you got a dip in the oil pressure when you do it. You can clearly see it in the logs from your car yeah. last year, and from other cars with VTEC. It drops, can, it can drop like 
one and a half, two kilos. That's quite a bit, yeah. And yeah, four, so if we don't need that, we shouldn't be running while we're on track. VTX should be always on anyway. Yeah, yeah, you're over that, you're in that rev range all the time. So we, I think we he, engage the VTEC now at like 4,200 RPM. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you should never be here another under 4,000. And we're going to rev it to about eight and a half, you think? Something like that, eight, seven, maybe. Eight, half, eight, seven. Depends how. <laughs> like us. Yeah. yeah. Depends we'll see how, how, how much we need to push it to get the gearing right and stuff like that also. Yeah, and also yeah. like since we're not we're not even porting the head for now, right? We're just no. running stock cams, yeah. so we might not get that much gain up top, and we really don't need it either. So, no, 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 exactly. We don't need to rev it beyond eight and a half for the power. It's yeah. maybe for get the gearing right. Yeah, to maybe get the top speed on the straight without regear the car. Yeah, that that would be nice. Yeah, I think I did some math and. Since we're moving to the 295 18s now, I think the top speed is going to be about 280 if we rev to eight and a half thousand. Okay, yeah, so that's I think enough. we, yeah, <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see, but it yeah. should be more than enough. We'll see how the aero goes as well, right? We had a yeah. bit too much drag this year, so hopefully, with the new aero kit, we can lower the drag, get a bit more, yeah, top get speed. more speed. Yep, so we finished turning the engine down now. Um, we're ready to head home, bit of a drive. Brief drive. Brief drive. Uh, quick snap for me. Quick nap Long for drive for you. Eight hours for me. But no, yeah, all finished up here at Motonov for this trip. We'll be back in a couple of months to do the full assembly of the new engine. Um, massive thanks to Roger for taking thank you for a Sunday. Coming. Yeah, thank you for making room for us on Sunday. We'll hear from you. Roger's also going to be doing some recording for us because it's a bit far, so we can't come here for every step of the process, unfortunately. But we're going to have some videos from that, and we're yep. going to come here for a final assembly. Yep. This is going to be a good, nice one. Thank you. See you in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Bye.